Hi friends, I'm Prairie Vintage. My name's Linda. I'm an energy intuitive reader here on YouTube. I use spirits and my intuition, the tarot, to communicate energies to you guys, amazing viewers. Today's reading, we're looking at all from the person on your mind's perspective in regards to why they can't just leave you alone. You know, why are they sort of hanging on to you or why they just don't go away? Okay, so this is their perspective as they understand it. Sometimes spirit pulls through with objective messages. So if that comes through, I'll be sure to pull that through as well. Now, because I'm not really going into who this person is so much, you'll have to use your intuition. Okay, what you'll see, feel, or hear to determine whether the pile is feeling right for you. If I do get any sort of uh, information regarding who they are, anything like this, I will be sure to communicate that. Okay, now for those of you guys new, I feel like I want to preface it, um, these readings. I do soul connection readings, twin flames, deep soul, karmic lessons. So this doesn't resonate for everyone. And this is solely, you know, in regards to ascension, heart consciousness, you know, not, not ego-based relationships, not those burn and turn fear-based love relationships. So this is why sometimes the messaging might not sit well or might not make any sense okay if we're in ego consciousness still acting out triggers still sort of wandering the matrix matrix relationships then we're going to be completely on another sort of frequency this is all about what we need to learn in regards to ascension collective consciousness and growth okay so Take what resonates. Don't force it to fit. If it doesn't make sense, don't take the message. Don't put up with abuse. Don't put up with anyone who treats you like crap. The messaging here is how do we integrate beyond egoic, dualistic sort of engagement in connection? How do we transcend this? How do we transcend ego? How do we move past this? How do we love from unconditional heart space? Okay? Like, I mean, true love. Not how do I, you know just give 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 and completely break that's not the messaging so i felt i needed to explain this to you guys i'm not your everyday sort of cup of tea you can certainly go check out other readers if they fit your situation better i'm more like a hard shot of whiskey and um, it's going to be straight up so if you're not prepared then not your reading and that's fine you know that's absolutely fine if i'm not your reader that's fine too maybe you want to just stick around and look at what's going on here that's fine too okay i love all of you guys it doesn't matter where you're at what's going on in your world this message is to provide healing and since this is coming from your person's perspective it could be completely twisted completely warped in regards to how they're sort of you know navigating through this but it's their reality and it's supposed to provide you with insight as to why this person is either challenged, suffering, battling, um, conflicting, causing issues, whatever it may be, or maybe why they love you and whatever pulls through here. But it's in regards to why this person is having a difficult time either moving on from you, letting you go, or, you know, engaging with you and it's going to provide you with some insight. So four options to choose from, four, I only see three, three options to choose from today. Maybe I should have done a fourth, but um, not gonna happen, not today. So three options, I will reveal these shortly. If you're drawn to the back side of these options, I will put the timestamp in the description box below. And I will reveal these shortly for those of you guys needing more energy here to lead you to whichever pile you feel is right. If you're called to multiple piles, it could be multiple aspects of your person pulling through. Okay, we're not two-dimensional. We have many, many different sort of sides. And so it could be different sides of this person. You know, things in their subconscious, things in their conscious awareness. I don't know what we're going to see. So it's up to you. Be open and don't force things to fit. Okay. So option one, honor your agreement, mission in motion, 8-8. Eight, eight. Option number two, 3-3 three, three with awareness, crystal clear vision. Option number four, and we have 9-9 nine, nine with the high priest, personal empowerment. 
Now, what I want to make mention is I'm trying to pull the person on your mind. And a lot of times we get our own energy, meaning this is going to sound a lot like you, your perception, why you can't let go or why you're having a hard time or what your challenges are. Okay. If that's the case, your person could be in another pile. That's absolutely common here. Okay. To tap into your own energy. So just putting that out there. All right. I will leave these here with you guys. Sit with this energy and um, I will see you guys at your pick. Hello, gorgeous angels. Pile number one. You guys picked eight, eight. Honor your agreement. Mission in motion. We're looking at the person on your mind, this connection. And why won't this person just sort of let you go? You know, what's their challenge? What's going on from their perspective? All about their perspective. How they might be engaged in their own sort of thought process when it comes to, you know, their engagement with you. And um, this is to provide you with some insight as to what's going on with this person. And it might assist you in how to engage with them. Okay. Now, because it's their perspective, it could be twer uh, twerped, <laughs> warped and twisted. Okay. Twerped. So don't uh, take it as objective truth. You know, try not to be triggered. If, if you are, then just know that that is um, something calling you to look at, you know, calling you to look at. And... Um, like I mentioned in the intro, these are all in regards to um, soul connections, you know. So it's it's making us sort of grow and expand and come from a different place rather than sort of egoic consciousness. We're all looking from unity consciousness, from our heart-based center, you know. How can we give unconditional love and give it to ourselves and allow things to not be you know them against me separation consciousness so this is the type of stuff i'm reading here doesn't resonate most likely not your pile don't make it fit also this could be your own energy okay because you could tap into your own pile your perspective why you can't move on why you can't let go what's your challenge okay so we might get one pile you one pile your person i don't know how it's going to come through um but if you know, if you're not sure if this is your person, lean into your intuition, what you'll see, feel, or hear to determine whether it is, because I'm not doing sort of an energy check here. I'm just going to lay this out. If your person pulls through here, like certain characteristics or what you need to know, I will be sure to let you know. Okay. So honor your agreement, mission in motion, definitely a soul contract, hundred percent. This could be a twin flame contract, a soulmate contract, a karmic contract, whatever it is, definitely karmic. Okay. Meaning there's a contract of sorts in which there's a lesson to be learned. Okay, but since we're looking from their perspective, let's see. What does this mean? Freedom. 21. The energy of freedom supports our sense of limitless possibility and potential, boundless expression, and bold exploration. Very interesting because I was getting a heavy, heavy kick of freedom here. You know, wrote it on my finger. I haven't looked at any of these cards. In fact, I wrote this before I even shuffle the cards. So, yeah, we'll see what's going on here with this freedom. Okay, we have surrender fear. Let go of fear stories. You are telling yourself, stay in the moment, focus on solutions, and celebrate every baby step forward. Surrender to spirit. Once you've done everything you can to achieve a goal, turn the situation over to the divine. Let spirit work its magic for you. And we have, I'm making changes for the better. Love seeing that card. I can't stand the thought of you with someone else. All right. And family, origin, soul, family, and groups. And boat, receiving what you need. Progression, arriving, moving on, closure, issues. And snake. And cardinal. And boundaries. Let's put that there. And we have the shapeshifter, number 15. 15 is the devil energy in the tarot, Capricorn energy. And we have the maiden. Number eight. And we have 52, which is the tier. Or the number seven. And then we have the runaway secrets, running from problems, 
here the cage is open tying back to freedom there's the key okay and we have rebel light attributes challenges authority to affects social sorry challenges authority to affect social change rejects spiritual systems that do not serve inner needs shadow attributes rejects legitimate authority out of anger rebels out of peer pressure or fashion okay artist light attributes expressing a dimension of life that is just beyond the five senses inspiring others to see life symbolically shadow attributes using talent as an excuse to mistreat others posing as a starving artist to elicit pit pity and victim light attributes prevents you from letting yourself be victimized or victimizing others shadow attributes playing the victim for positive feedback in the form of pity in inability to maintain personal boundaries I've got boundaries here okay and then we have antimony with the wolf here number 27 or the number nine and we have sulfur number 29 or the number 11 okay this energy is is really clear okay what's going on with this person but to let me see and i'm getting a blend of um their perspective clearly and how they're sort of seeing it and engaged and i'm also getting what's ob objectively sort of going on as well here in this connection for context so just let me sit here for a little bit Uh, I'm going to actually read the cardinal because I'm not sure how this, um, and again, communications from, you know, our loved ones and what this is all sort of implying here with the cardinal. So let's see, uh, where's the cardinal in this book? Kind of halfway-ish over here-ish. There it is. Angelic presence, love, divinity, empathy, and devotion and passion. A brilliantly red cardinal is most often thought of as a harbinger of divine messages and signals. The presence of visitors from heaven. These might be loved ones who visit us from the other side. Spirit guides are even an angelic presence. To pull the cardinal in a reading is a sure sign that you're watched over and protected by divine forces and unconditional love. If you have recently lost someone you love, the cardinal signals their presence around you. Outside of their connection to a higher realm of consciousness, cardinals are often associated with love, harmony, bliss, and devotion. As these ruby red lovers made for life, this is a call to get honest with yourself and your heart. Who and what are you devoted to right now? Our hearts burn with passion for many things, and it's important to do what we can to tend to our passions to ensure they stay alive. If you feel out of touch with your heart and its desires, it's a sign to find a way to open back up. When our hearts are open, we can get, sorry, we can greet everyone with everything. We can greet everyone and everything with compassion, empathy, and tenderness. Okay, makes even more sense. Tenderness, right? You said this maiden. I was kind of getting, um, initially made an energy from you but it's this person okay gotta unpack this thing try to stay with me here okay although it's not very confusing but so this person has a soul contract here okay with you the biggest thing for this person is having to learn about transcending certain parts of themselves here that are really tied to understanding what freedom is all about and how that um how that impacts this person and how they show up in their world because i feel like this person is a complete rebel okay somebody who has to do it alone there's a lot of fear around trusting anyone else to sort of do anything here for them or to for them to connect in a relationship okay because of the fact that this person you know has traumas and this is deep deep rooted traumas from who knows many lifetimes you know but in this lifetime there is a, a push pull here because this person is really being called to trust the divine 
And I don't feel in this lifetime this person has overcome the stages of actually being like um, this open virgin type energy in a connection, you know, like um, completely surrendered, completely open to what is, completely open to unconditional love, following the passion of the heart. There's a lot of healing this person is doing. So I feel like there's a lot of um, egoic things when it comes to how they're dealing with this, with the shapeshifter, you know, they could pretty much almost do the dance here, whatever they need to do to protect themselves in a way here so that they create this illusion of being free and independent and not needing anyone here. So it's sort of opposite of this, of this victim, although they are, you know, a victim at the end of the day because they feel as though, um, you know, trusting others or opening up in a connection in some way or trusting the divine and then being completely raw and open in a, in a connection here, kind of like this, this virgin energy and getting trusting and pure and all this would be um, gullible or, or um, leave them open to vulnerabilities here. And so they're like, I'm not a, a victim, you know, I'm not going to be played by others. I'm not, you know, it's like the polar opposite here of, um, of this, they don't want to be a victim. Okay. This, this is in their shadow. It's a feeling here that makes them feel weak. I don't know, disgusted, uh, less than it's like, if I'm a victim, Ugh, like that, that makes me feel not good. So that's the shadow because in turn, they are being victim and they're being victim to this mindset and freedom at all costs, independence, me, myself, and I, my way or the highway, you know? And so this causes pain. And so why this connection this is a big sort of block in this person's energy. And this is supposed to shake them out of this so that they can free themselves from these limiting you know, chains. And so they're learning about boundaries because I feel like this person doesn't really understand healthy boundaries because yes, of course we need autonomy. Yes, of course we need our freedom and independence, but I feel their boundaries is, is skewed. It's like the boundary here is I don't let anyone get really close and intimate. Okay. But, but that's sort of thinking they're protecting themselves in some way. Right. But this is what they're needing to heal. And so there is a, a, a karmic bond or a soul bond, soul understanding. They feel like, you know, whether they, they realize or not, there's this soul connection to you. You're their soul family here. You're the one sort of um, mirroring this lesson back to this person. You know, so there's changes in regards to healing and seeing self and seeing these blocks and limitations that this person is having to deal with in this lifetime that they've been avoiding, delaying, suppressing, trying to be every which way but that. And so the devil pulls through because I feel like this person has unhealthy ways of coping with this. You know, there's a, there's an underlying uh, loneliness here, although they wouldn't admit to them to be victim. So it's, I'm not feeling any of these things, you know, whatever they tell themselves, you know, I meant to be single or whatever, but you know, we don't all have to be in a relationship, but we all should be connecting in an authentic way. I don't feel this person understands what it means to be authentically in heart space, vulnerable, but that comes with the territory of connection, you know, but that would kick them off to feeling like they'd be open to be a victim. And so they rebel. Okay. And so this person just, it's coming through, even in, if it's not relationships, I feel this person has a rebellious streak with any type of authority, you know, don't tell me what to do. And this person is also pulling through as with this artist, because I feel like there's something in regards to this person that is very much um, creative, you know, they could be like literally like um, an artist here, you know, music, writing, painting, developing, creator mindset, you know, something about this person that's, um, I don't know, like it comes through very creatively here. And so this person has a love of this, you know, a passion of this. And so the, the, the output, okay, because I can't give unconditionally and be vulnerable in connection with humans one-on-one. -on -one. My output is to take this, that in which I'm, you know, not experiencing in this real world and my, my outlet, my outlet is my artistic thing, my acting, my singing, my dancing, my painting. And so you or anyone else, but most likely you drawn by this person's passion because you see this part 
that's being funneled through their creative self, but it's not available, you know, in, in how they engage in relationship. So you see this block. And so you recognize there's pain here that this person might not even realize and most likely probably doesn't realize because they're so convinced that pushing themselves that they don't need it or they need to be someone else. They need to be this rebel in order to be strong, you know? And this makes them look not victim. This is the shapeshifter. I'm going to do all these things to avoid acknowledging this part of myself because I'm suppressing it in my shadow. I don't want to see this because at some point in their lifetimes or lifetime, they might have expressed how they felt and got shut down or rejected or hurt or were told that they were, you know, weak for crying. Maybe they were vulnerable and they didn't get what they needed back. And so they, they felt victim. It's like, I never want to feel that victim way again. So I'm going to do the opposite here. You know, but now I'm causing, creating suffering. And so there's a lot of fear around intimacy with this person, a lot of fear around opening up the heart space, being vulnerable, sharing how they truly feel. Do they have uh, emotions for you? Yes. Why are they hanging on to you in this connection? Because there's a contract here for them to learn this and break through to become a better version of themselves, make changes in their life for the better, heal these parts of self. Okay, and, and why... They can't just sort of let you go as well as because if they, if they, there's this two swords that's going on. If I let you go and know I got to work on this thing at the same time, it's like, I can't stay with you unless I work on this. But if I let you go, you're going to go move on with someone else. So how about I hang on to you and not deal with this because we don't want to deal with our shadow. That means facing fear. But I also don't commit to you in any sort of way because that would impede on my freedom. You know, then I'd have to be vulnerable. Then I'd have to look at making changes and I don't want to do any of this. Don't want to. So I just run away from this problem, avoid what I need to do to make myself better and heal and take a look at the shadow. And so I block you out if you get too close. But yet because I crave connection, we get close and then I push you away. And so I'm hot and I'm cold. If I got too close or said too much, now I'm, you know, at risk of being a victim. So I got to change into someone else, someone cold, someone who's independent, who doesn't need anything. My way or the highway. You know, but the, the unconditional love is pulling through here because there's something divine within this person, within all of us, that recognizes a greater capacity of love. And so I feel like you give this person unconditional love. They feel divine love coming from you. They know their divine being is to be loved and to give love. Not to live in ego and fear, you know, to surrender to spirit and this divine calling. To be pulled, to be, you know, completely vulnerable, connect from a heart space. And heal this part of themselves. So that they can connect. And so they have a hard time moving on from you. Because... If they let you go, you know, then it's like, okay, you're going to go move on with someone else and I'm still stuck with the misery that is happening here in my world because you're coming in here to shake and wake up this person to go through this process. And on a deep, deep soul level, there's an understanding of this, although they don't recognize it. And so that's the pull to you because they know that they're suffering here, that they need to transcend past this and heal this big block in them and i can't just keep focusing on this thing you know whatever this person has a passion you know a passion for writing singing like i said dancing music something they're doing here and it's it, it, they're so hanging on to this thing you know and it's fine but i feel like it is the result of the absence of this going on in their world and so the more empty they feel the more they hang on to this thing you know, and so no one can get between them and this, this sort of love thing, this creative thing that they're engaged with or they're outpouring their passion and their commitment to, you know. And so I feel like you, you, you like this about this person because this person has a strong conviction to their, their, what they're seeing here, you know, what they're creating here, what they're engaged with here. Like, because if this person is so challenged to show up, in an emotional sort of aspect, 
it, it you see it very clearly in how they're engaged with this aspect so it's like okay so clearly this person knows unconditional love knows to reach into these deep places so if they know about this why is it then that when it comes to this connection it's so foreign to them they can't open up it, it seems like they're not interested in some way or it's so like disjointed here you know and that's because they're, they're they're skewed and they're shifting all of their sort of i don't know they're like t taking this energy and and trying to like i said release it in another outlet because it has to sit somewhere energy needs to find balance somehow some way you know but there's only a matter of time before this person has to do sort of the shadow work and look at self so they don't want you to go they don't want you to move on and i'm sure you have you know when we make these soul contracts you have also things in your contract that you're having to clear out that this person is bringing out in you and so it works as a mirror you know and one of your things could certainly be here because i was sensing your energy from the maiden it's like i'm giving this person unconditional love how do i you know um engage with this person who clearly is keeping me at an arm's distance here but also won't let me go and so i need to learn about unconditional love of myself you know but but not in a way here that that condemns this person for this shadow or this challenge but that i'm not just remaining in some sort of um, situationship okay so this definitely resonates with my energy here that i'm tapped into so I don't know i don't know how many of you guys are resonating with this but it's clear as day to me what's going on here and so this person's going to keep sort of running away from their problem you know and so this is the challenge because it's like well i could abandon this person you know and prove them right in some way because this is why they were like this they didn't want to get hurt or i can stay and what you know, and this person feel like, you know, that they, they're sort of in this sort of middle ground and, you know, they're needing to sort of push themselves out of this energy. But this is nothing we can push them out of. This is only something we can support someone. And either they see it or they don't. I feel this person wants to make changes for the better. But as anyone who has shadow, it is difficult. Anyone who has fear, it is difficult. And so it's going to take however long it takes this person to sort of do this, you know. But I feel like as long as they keep, you know, it's kind of like a distraction here with this. Although it is a passion of theirs, but it's kind of a, a distraction outlet. Whatever we call those things. Um, uh, creative creatures, I think I heard them called. I don't know. Creative creatures. Something we're shifting, dedicating ourselves to or, you know, just to sort of distract us in a way but we wouldn't call it a distraction because if you remove this thing this person has no other way to express the, these trapped emotions so they're being called to trust the divine you know to be vulnerable and to get a healthy understanding of what freedom actually is in independence we don't have to be owned by anyone we could be autonomous we could be independent and free and we can also be in a committed loving relationship and once we connect to the being that is, and we tap into this, we know the difference that nobody can take away our freedom when we're tapped into the divine. Nobody, even a relationship, nothing can take away that. It's always there, pure. It doesn't feel threatened. The only part that feels threatened is the ego self, the hurt self, the experienced self that, that, that was victimized at one point. You know? So we gotta grieve and see this, see the ego self, uh, shed this belief become reborn make changes in our world specifically how we view things this person might be dependent on things with the devil here like i said they'd certainly depend on this creative thing but usually artist types could be you know drinking partying drugs avoidance type attachment styles whatever they're doing here because they have a hard time so it's either they can't come and they can't go. Well, I'm getting here with arriving and moving on. It's like, are you in or are you out? You know, and they're kind of in and out. 
So this isn't to give you any sort of advice, more so to see from their sort of perspective. And their perspective here is is they really believe that, you know, that, that their freedom could be impeded here. So and they have to just, you know, keep people out. And that's their belief, but they don't they really see why they're doing it. They don't really see their shadow. They don't really fully understand why they're pulled to you so much as there's a, a contractual agreement for them to heal this and see this about self. I don't even think they realize this is an outlet that makes them feel the, the feelings that they've been pushing away or suppressing from connection because here they can feel all those senses. They can feel love, they can feel, but it's, it's, it's very um, removed. You know, it's, it's one step sort of removed because you know the music isn't going to come back to hurt them you know or the 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 painting isn't going to come back to hurt them the the acting isn't going to come back but if we're in a relationship it's two-sided it's like okay I, I give my love i put all my emotion and then what comes back if it's not something that is reflecting what i what i want to feel back if it makes me feel hurt or shut out i don't want to leave myself open to that that makes me vulnerable and i'm going to be victim again so i just rebel you know, I don't need that. I don't need people. I don't need relationship. Okay, then. Let's take a look at the cards, tarot, and see if anything else pulls through from their perspective. Spirit, anything Pile 1 needs to know about this person. The Knight of Wands in reverse. So Knight of Wands is following our passions. You know, not really thinking of any long-term plan. We kind of just pursue and take action on it. So this is in the reverse. I'm wondering if this person in the past might have been really sort of showing up in this heated energy, kind of coming and going hot and cold. If maybe there's um, them recognizing this. Let's see, Spirit, why are we seeing this? What does Pile 1 need to know about this? Okay, so we have Temperance. We need to, to find balance for sure. Sagittarius Energy, Ace of Wands. There's that inspired action again heavily connected to this knight of wands okay very much um passionate and attracted to you this person doesn't know how to regulate you know or even show up here so need to find balance queen of wands oh my goodness look at all these wands this is um the most attractive queen in the tarot like if we're talking about who pulls us sexually and who we're attracted to it'd be the queen of wands you know, I feel you're coming through as this Queen of Wands. There's the Tower, and there's the High Priestess in reverse. Not listening to the Divine, like we said, right? Surrender to Spirit. And the Cardinal, what I read in the layout was, you know, I need to see what Spirit and our intuition is sort of pulling us towards. And this would requ require this Tower in our world. And the whole uh, Hierophant, my my way of thinking, my, my ideology on relationship, and my beliefs about freedom... And relationship would come tumbling down. The thing I built, you know, everyone knows me as single, independent, not needing anyone. So now I have this tower built on shaky ground because I can't sustain that forever, you know. We can't just shadow connection and, and be the only person in history here that, that doesn't need connection or want connection and be fully healed unless, you know, of course if we're unhealed, but healing is going to have to eventually take place because this is the sand we're building our home on. We're not building homes on, on stone. Are building homes on, on sand. So, Knight of Pentacles in reverse and the Queen of Pentacles in reverse. Yeah, this person has a hard time committing. And I feel you've, you're no longer either committed to this person or, you know, an opportunity here to provide to this person. You're kind of, I, I feel like you're, you're not making yourself committed to this person at this time. You know, and this person is really pulled by your energy sexually and, and they're resisting. So they're really out of balance here because they know that they have to address healing something here. Because this would mean if the Queen of Pentacles is in reverse, she's no longer sort of there just being there, supportive and giving of herself in some way. She's no longer sort of invested here, which would mean she might be moving on with herself, you know. And what does that mean? Maybe she might find someone else. I have to deal with this tower. I have to deal with the fact that I'm not showing up and I'm not in a balanced energy here. And, and I'm really pulled sexually and attracted to, you know, this person. It's pulling me to make changes here. And I'm not listening to the divine or my intuition. 
Queen of Swords. So your energy is pulling through as every queen so far, except for the Queen of um, the Queen of um, Cups, because you might not be pouring endless love here to this person. You know, Queen of Cups. This is compassion, love, caring. I feel you laid a boundary potentially. Maybe you got clear about what you wanted and you said, I can't invest here. I can't keep moving at this pace. It's very slow. I need an offer. I'm just not going to invest here, you know? And so this uh, elevates your attraction because it's like, I know my self-worth. I know what I'm worthy of here. And what I need is commitment or something solid. I could bring this towards me because I'm beautiful, confident, and I can make things happen and manifest. And this is my boundary. And what I've experienced here with you has made me see clearly. So I see clearly. So this is my boundary. No commitment? Well, then I guess you can want me, you know, from afar. But, but what do you want from me? Yeah, look. This person wants to be your partner, you know? King of Wands. This is this rebel energy. Like, I do what I want. I get what I want. You know, very fiery. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn, Sagittarius, Pisces, and Aries, Leo, Sag. So, yeah, this person is still really attracted to you. I'm sure you already know. You know, they see you as all the queens here. And like I said, it's just the Queen of Cups here that you're probably not just, you know, overly emotionally pouring here. And Nine Cups, this person's not getting what they want. They're not getting your cup here. Okay, this is the soul contract. It's like, if you wanted the cups... The pentacles, my beauty, and my wisdom here. You'd have to make a change and allow this tower to fall. So now you get my boundary. Anything that I could build, I'm going to build for myself. If you want to build with me, you have to commit to me. But yeah, you can certainly be attracted to me. And you know, I could be pulling you in with my magnetic energy. Sure. All you want. Take a look. Here I am. You know, but I don't want that. I want my queen of cups. I want you to want me. But I'm also king of wants. So I want it my way or the highway. Oh, no, it's not going to happen. Okay? So that's what I see here in the dynamic going on between you and this person. I love you very much. Pile number one. Uh, I feel like this is progressing, you know. But um, this person has to deal with their sulfur. And it stinks. <laughs> you know, it, it stinks when we have to face our fear and we go through tower moments and we don't see the shadow and all that stuff. Especially the cockiness and confidence of the king of wants. But really, is it confidence or is it an ego confidence? You know, I'm a rebel. I get what I want. I do what I want. I'm not a victim. I'm not weak. I'm doing this on purpose. I'm independent. I'm free. I'm a free soul. But yet I'm so free that I fear, you know, I'm so free, free that fear is what's controlling me. I'm so free that I'm not experiencing a, a spiritual deep connection here. And so I just output it towards a, a material thing or a, a thing rather than it coming full circle. I'm outputting it, but I'm too scared to open to what could come back to me. So not free at all. Very limited. Okay, but there's only a matter of time this person sits nine cups because they're going to have to come into some sort of balance and deal with this tower falling. So this is what I have. I'll see you guys at the next one. Bye-bye. Hello, hello, beautiful pile number two. You guys picked three, three with awareness, crystal clear vision. Oh my goodness. Well, we're looking at the person on your mind and what is their perspective in regards to why they can't let you go? Why can't they just sort of move on? What is their hold on you and, and what's going on from their perspective? And like I mentioned in the intro, sometimes we get um, spirit pulling through objectively as well. If I see that, I will let you know. And because I'm not doing an energy check so much, you'll have to use your intuition. What you'll see, feel, or hear to determine whether this is even your pile or your person. If anything comes through here to give me sort of um, any indication as to who this could be, I'll, I'll let you know. And um, yeah, since it's their perspective, it could be completely skewed, you know, but we'll see. We'll see if we can get some clarity here because this is intended to help you sort of understand what this person's thinking and navigating through some of maybe their fears or why it is that they're doing what they're doing, you know, where they're coming from. So 3-3 three, three awareness, crystal clear vision. Let's see. Like I said, if this is your energy too, then you might want to go check out another pile because sometimes it comes reversed, okay? 
So we have connection 14. The frequency of connection supports our ability to find alignment and resonance with others, things, and ideas. 14 is temperance. Connection. Very similar energy in the center. Surrender obsessive thinking. If you're obsessing about a person or situation, turn the dilemma over to spirit. Doing so will help bring you clarity or even solve the problem. Surrender to the wisdom of your body. Listen to your body's messages about a person or situation. If you feel physically drained or uncomfortable, be cautious. If you're energized and happy, move forward. Okay. A telepathic bond. And I'm afraid of losing you. And dark male. Darker than lighter. So, like I said, if I was getting any physical sort of traits, so this person could certainly have darker skin, okay, or darker skin than you. But but uh, what I'm really feeling here is um, this is coming through as an imbalance, okay, as an imbalance in the masculine, and we all have masculine feminine energy. So I, I feel like there's a shadow in the masculine, and this can manifest in many different ways depending on what their trauma is. Okay, so let's see. Uh, healthy choices, making healthy choices in love and in life. Self-love, self-care, being happier. Mm -hmm. Lion. It's all about our courage, facing fears. Lizard. This is dream state. And the griffin. Oh my goodness. I feel like whatever's going on between you guys is quite um, quite profound going on in this person's life right now, okay? So we have self-doubt with the, the mirror and the skull and crossbones and the ace of cups. The star energy is Aquarius. I am going to read this griffin. It's all about... Um, things we don't really see with the griffin here. It's kind of a magical magical bird that's um that even really exist here so let's see what is i don't know where this griffin is going to be in this book because giraffe where is this griffin spirit okay well let's see it's the very last card of course the super conscious the superconscious. Wowzers. The griffin is a mythical creature possessing the head, talons, and wings of an eagle, but the body of a lion. Oh my goodness, look, we got the lion here. Thanks to the few and the body here. Wow, okay, matrix, which is masculine. Okay, so thanks to the fusing of these two powerhouses, the griffin has often been used as a symbol of fierce power and impenetrable protection while you'll never see one in real life to see a griffin in your dreams dream oh my goodness this is so crazy in your dreams um is a compelling message from spirit thanks to the mythos of this being and the incredible height to which it soars the griffin possesses an incredible vantage point that reveals potent truths we can obtain only through spiritual enlightenment or through tapping into the super subconscious or sorry super consciousness of the divine if griffin energy is at play you are in a rare and faded moment in your life yes exactly what I was feeling and it's time to pay attention sometimes the griffin is depicted as being so large it can bolt out of the sun in this form the griffin is known as ziz a creature from jewish mythology that can also allow the light of the sun to come through if it so chooses in both darkness and light, which I was totally getting from this shadow. There are different experiences and truths to be found. There is a time to sit in the dark and silence and a time to step out into the illumination and warmth of the sun. In this way, we can grasp that the divine is in all things. It is in both the light and the dark. Simultaneously, there is an appropriate time for both. And in this moment, you must discern which you need. Oh my goodness, you guys. These readings, I tell you, father, number two, masculine energy pulling through again. Wow. Okay. Look, the shadow, you guys. 
I didn't look at these. I didn't make any of these up. This message is so, 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 so clear. The Desert, 37. Mm -hmm. Desert, Lizard, Drown in Self. Okie dokie. And we have the Brawler, Lack of Empathy, Confrontation. Oh my goodness. I have Angel, Light Attributes, Helping Those in Need with No Expectation of Return. Shadow attributes, acting innocent or angelic to mislead others, falsely claiming to be in touch with angelic guidance. And then we have king, light attributes, enlightened, benevolent, leadership, benefiting those in your charge, excessive feelings of entitlement, rulership without restraint. Mm -hmm. And you guys, wow, queen, radiates. The regal feminine uses her benevolent authority to protect others. Shadow attributes becomes arrogant when authority is challenged, controlling, and demanding. I've read for this energy before. Resin, 38. And oil of vitriol, 35. Okay, you guys, I have to say this, okay? I've been reading here for a bit, and I know you guys are tired of hearing it, and those that don't resonate with it start talking about how someone's so challenging how can they deal with someone so challenging and if you can't deal with someone so challenging it's time to move on i guess okay unless you feel you cannot move on or you know that there is a higher calling than how we've been living here in ego consciousness 99 percent of the world you know dualistic thinking them against me you hurt me and now i just move on but there's a greater way we can live this is raising the vibration on earth. This is called unconditional love, heart-based consciousness, unity consciousness, whatever you want to call it, is different than how we're normally engaged in relationship. It's not Hollywood love. It's not what can I attain from this person that I want that makes me feel good about self. This is solely about unconditional giving of love, period. How we get there, solely up to you. It doesn't mean be in a connection with them having sex, okay? What it means is how can I see past this person's all of their crap? Because this person's full of crap, okay? So I'm going to read this person. I'm pretty sure it's your person, okay? But I feel your energy through here because I feel, again, I'm reading soul connections. This isn't your everyday connection saying, my person was abusive. Okay, they're abusive. Move on. You know, I'm sorry you were abused. I don't know. That's your life path. And that's what's going on. And whatever, okay? So was this person abusive? I don't know. Most likely. Depends how you see it. You know, and it's not victim shaming. This is, this person is hurting. Hurt people hurt people. What's this person doing? This person is completely needing to transcend their shadow. And their shadow is coming out very bad when it comes to connection. And unfortunately, you're this person here who needs to learn about how to give love without expecting anything in return. Hard to do. Because it's like, what? I don't want to be a doormat. No, then don't. That's the lesson. How do you give love? Not expecting this person to do these things, right? Becomes arrogant when authority is challenged. Controlling and demanding. And every time I do the reading, I'm saying, don't be mad. You know, it's like, well, I'm not mad. I'm just mirroring back to them what they're doing. Okay. And then that's dualistic approach. Go ahead. So what does the angel and the queen need to do? Because the angel and the queen is this person's counterpart. Why this person can't let you go? Because they're being called to a higher divinity. A higher divinity. This person is very magical, and I have a feeling so are you, okay? Magical, as in very tapped into the divine, very psychic, trying to bring change to this world, which is how do we show unconditional love? How do we tap into the divine and see beyond egos where we can be in unity consciousness, you know, and, and share this with the world? So what's this person? They have the big fat shadow, and the big fat shadow is lies. They seem cold. They're not showing up for you because they, they don't feel good about themselves. They argue, and then that causes arguments with you. So it's all about how do you handle this person, you know? And I think things are stuck, 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 until this person sees a better way, and you are the one who's going to show them a better way, if you want. If you don't, move on then. But you're here because you're stuck. And why you're stuck is because you also have to transcend past your ego, which is how do I learn about being unstuck and giving love and not turning it back into an argument and projecting what I want. So both of you guys, obsessive over however you guys are dealing with this. It's resulting in stuckness. You know, there's a connection coming together here about balance. How do I show up so that my person could be the best version of self? You know, however that might be. I accept them in the energy that they're in. I don't force them. 
I'm not giving love because I'm expecting anything except for supporting however I can with this person for their best, highest good. And sometimes it is just loving them from afar, but it's not I block you, you block me. And then when they come saying, you know, here's my list. No, you can't do that. It's like, no, well, they don't owe you anything. You know, I'm tired of saying this, but there's a vision here. And the vision is seeing through the eyes of the divine. And so it's all clouded when we live in the matrix. We don't know our divine being. We're totally stuck in, you know, drinking drugs, partying, treating people like crap, being cold, you know, wandering here in a, in a desert, thinking that we have the power or have a power trip. So how do you deal with someone like this? This is your lesson, okay? There's a telepathic bond for sure because this is a soulful connection. This person's unhealthy. They're toxic. So when they see themselves, they see toxicity. When they are in connection, they see toxicity. That's who they think they are. But nobody is toxic. You know, they may be acting in toxic ways. This is how they see themselves. So if they see themselves as toxic and not healthy, of course they can't give you anything you want. But I feel this person is suffering, you know, and having to choose healthy for their body because they might be suffering from, like I said, addiction or just very poor choices. And so this person, why they can't let you go is because they don't want to lose you. They don't, because they know you're this beautiful capacity here, although you're not acting in this, I feel. And maybe this is something you're learning and it's taking time, but I feel it's been stuck here for a bit. It's stuck here for a bit because this is very difficult to do. But if you're divine feminine and energy, you're leading the way. Your person is full of shadow. And so you could say, well, once this person sort of transcends the shadow, then I can move. It's like if you're if you're resonating with the soul connection, we cannot expect the other person to do anything at all unless we lead the way through the mirror because we mirror this action. So if I'm cold, they're going to be cold. If I can't transcend my shadow, they can't transcend their shadow. And right now, the shadow here with this angel queen is learning about unconditional love, not needing anything in return. Angelic guidance, connecting to the divine and coming from divine love. Treating this person as they would someone that they love unconditionally, not expecting anything to have clear crystal vision rather than getting into tit for tat and arguments. Why you did this and why you did that. This person is a stand up person underneath it all. You know, they are somebody who could be a provider, protector and all these things. But right now they're balancing their shadow. And they need to integrate it. And the shadow is, is slowly dying off here. But how do they how do they do this? You know? Unless they have examples here that that can, I don't know, lead the way, show them a reflection. You know, I see you. I see past your your ego. I see past your actions here. I see you as this beautiful Father King energy because that's who you truly are. You know. So I'm going to continue to see you like this, uh, regardless of how you see yourself. That doesn't mean I'm going to compromise myself. You know. So I'm not going to get co confrontational, you know, and if this person is lacking empathy in any way, that's on them. That has nothing to do with you. It doesn't impact your soul being. So this person has ego and they're, they're sort of acting out here. Okay. But, but you can act however you act, regardless of how this person is. And so this is where we're supposed to be looking as always, what can I do best here in a situation that's going to diffuse? That's going to be based on a heart consciousness, not ego consciousness, not perpetuating more projection. And you could, that's not wrong, but then you're going to be in this sort of pattern in your world with other people or stuck in this connection because it's obsessive thinking. It's coming through as a soul thing that we're needing to shine the light of awareness on how we are doing because it's all about our shadow. You have a shadow about as big as this person has a shadow. And so when we're looking at the other person's shadow as why don't they deal with this? This is so apparent. As big as their shadow is, is as big as your shadow is. But you don't see it because it's your own shadow. And it might be a positive shadow, but a shadow is a shadow nonetheless. You know, if we're always giving, 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 uh, what's wrong with us? If we're always sort of uh, being the martyr, you know, bending over backwards, making ourselves the doormat. Why? That's the shadow. Big fat shadow. Why do we feel unworthy? Why are we doing this? How do we empower ourselves without blocking this person and getting to arguments, you know, and then getting the polar opposite? I'm empowered. I'm going to block you. I'm going to say, this is my list of things I need. Okay, big fat shadow. And that's fine. But all we're doing is reliving the egoic relationship again and again and again. Stuck, stuck, stuck. 
you know, and where did this originate? Obviously from some sort of trauma that's needs to be resolved and, and, and set free here with this resin, you know, and so we hang on to the memory of that. And I feel like both of you guys have had some sort of thing that's happened in this connection that caused a big argument. One major event here, I feel, probably a few, but one thing here that we can't let go of. This is my one thing that I can't see past. You know, one thing that made me angry, that one lie, you know, so that's the thing that I keep focusing on, the thing that hurt me. That's the thing that's stuck here. We need to transmute to this clog. You know, we need to take it. Now, we don't need to do anything. Do what you want. But all I'm talking about is if I'm reading for a soul connection, I'm telling you exactly what I'm seeing here. And there's a clog here of energy because we're choosing to stick to the hurt, which is creating this. And this is shadow. And so now we need to see this with our divine eyes. You know, how would the divine see this? The divine sees this as an egoic thing. That, that compared to the divine energy doesn't mean anything at all. So how am I going to take this? I can make a big thing about this. Or I could transcend this energy. You know, however you transcend it. But I feel, yeah, this person is cold for sure. This person is in their ego for sure. You know, but there's something great going on here. And I, and I feel like it is divine counterparts needing to learn the same lessons. Both of you guys are equally balancing each other out. Shadow, shadow. Case of pentacles and the devil in reverse. So we're releasing things that are, like I said, I was picking up devil from the number 15 here. Or was it? I thought I had devil. Did I not have devil? Maybe I'm asleep. I was feeling devil energy. So the devil person is um, having a difficult time. You know, devil is shadow, feeling bound to these things, bad decisions, toxic ways of being, arguments, lies. There's lots going on here with this person, you know? So Capricorn energy. Yeah, it was with this healthy choices and this toxicity. Like, they see themselves as toxic. They don't know about self-love. And then we see another star. So their, their future, it's like they're almost like this person doesn't even, you know, they don't know how to connect to themselves, like seeing themselves as, as what it is that they want for themselves is something that's even going to be deserving, you know? And and it's um it's sad here how they're connecting to themselves. And it's not your fault. You're not here to heal anyone else. I'm just saying your your contract is what you're learning about yourself, which is why do I do what I do? You know, and am I perpetuating this or not? Am I coming from the greatest divine place I can that I feel comfortable with? You know, and do I feel good putting my list of rules and saying I'm empowered? Good. Then if that's your thing, then that's your thing. But if you feel that's in shadow, you know, covering something up, which is how do I healthily not to get offended or, or feel betrayed by somebody like this because when someone acts like this i have to know that it's not a reflection of who i truly am but if i still get triggered i know i still have shadow if this person triggers you you have shadow that's it and where is it you know what's going on so let's see spirit clear and concise message for pile number two in regards to this connection four swords in reverse six pentacles in reverse this isn't easy stuff you know i feel you have a beautiful energy but we're, we're, we're being the best version of self we're on this journey for a reason you know raise consciousness be the best divine being we can be here for ourselves to to improve our own lives okay and the world eight swords this is this resin and chariot in reverse this is this resin uh, cancer energy four wands not no union not coming together knight of cups in reverse and judgment yeah and the queen of wands aries leo sagittarius energy and then capricorn so both of you guys are mirroring each other i feel very heavily here and so divine feminine generally leads the spiritual journey and it's one about self it's not about fixing them it's not about external what they're doing it's solely about how can I be the best version of myself and, and, and connect to the divine? And divine eyes has no judgment. Divine eyes does not expect anything in return other than just being of service to others and giving love. Period. End of story. How do we get there? Obviously, we're not Mother Teresa, but 
we need to find a better balance because I feel we're taking a dualistic approach here. And this is what we're sitting with, a great truth. Do I want conflict? I don't know, do I want conflict? Is there a greater truth? What are my limitations? Am I getting triggered? That means I still have shadow. That means there's still a devil hole. This means I can't come into union with this person. We can't create something here because there's still a lot of shadow. It's imbalanced. The manifestation cannot happen. It hasn't come together. So I need to do the proper reflecting here. If I spend all my time away arguing and supporting rather than looking at the shadow, I'm not really healing. So it doesn't matter how much time I take away. Oh, it's been months. Oh, I sat here apart from this person for however long. But yeah, but are we sitting with the greater truth? Or are we sitting with ourselves supporting why we're three sorts? They did this, they did that. I'm still getting triggered. I still see their social media. I'm still supporting why I left. I'm still waiting for them to turn around. I'm still justifying all of these reasons of what I need to see in this person, this, that, and the other. Well, it's not going to move and they're not going to come forward. And if they do, it's going to be just to repeat more pain and suffering, you know, of something that didn't happen. How's it going to happen? The only time things move successfully and happen is when we shift our own energy. It doesn't matter what this person said, did, or didn't do. We shift our energy. Okay? We release this limitation, this eight swords, however we're seeing it. We only see one way of seeing it. And the way we're seeing it isn't helpful, isn't healing, isn't in line with the divine truth. It could be in line with your truth, egoic truth. This person needs to... Do all these things for it to be balanced, for then it to work and come together. Okay, well, that's in a normal, you know, whatever, fear-based relationship. But in a, in a divine connection that's ba based on soul contract and ascension to be closer to the divine, then we need to understand how this works, you know? We don't need to do anything, but this is why things are stuck. So if you don't want to be stuck, you can either move on or you can try to see your own shadow which is within you. Yeah, Knight of Wands. Things are stuck, not moving forward. This person I don't feel is going to really just heal on their own here. Five of Wands in reverse. So this person senses if they were to come forward, there'd be conflict. You know, because there was conflict in the past. However you handle them being how they are. And, and they already know how they are. They're not stand up. They see that in themselves. They see themselves as, you know, toxic. They might not say that. They might say, yeah, well, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But they know deep down what they did wasn't right. But they, they feel deep down that they look toxic like this. And so if they know this and then they approach you and you prove it right, I mean, you're not going to placate them and lie. But if your response had been, I see past this, you know, and I, I wanted to be with you. And I still want to, if you still do. But... I, I see that you're behaving in ways that are below beneath you. And I still give you love. I see you're better than this, you know? I'm not going to fly off the handle. I'm not going to tell you all these things I need from you or that you can't even give to yourself. You know, and the re only reason I'm getting triggered here as well is because I got things as well, and you triggered me. But I want to be the best version of me. And so since you hurt me, I have to look at myself, you know? Honestly, my own shadow. And so... Although in the past I might have yelled at you because you hurt me, I should have been yelling at myself as well because you're doing things in a way and I'm doing things in a way. It might be opposite ways, which I feel is opposite. I keep giving and giving. I keep martyring myself. I keep doing all these things with an expectation. And you keep doing opposite, being cold, opposite. You know, both of us need to find balance. Both of us are out of balance. Both. You know, although yours came through as maybe being hurtful, but there is no such thing as bad and good. It's just one energy and one energy, and you guys are polar opposites here. So I need to come together in order for things to move forward. You have shadow, which is equally as toxic. It could be on the polar spectrum, you know, too nice, too giving, too, but where is it stemming from? Stemming from a shadow within that also thinks I'm not good enough if I'm just myself. I have to give. I have to do these things, you know? And then we go polar opposite and say, well, I need all these things, you know? It's like, well, no, you just need to be yourself. And so does this person without all the triggers. You know, because now we're limiting the moon in reverse. Get out of our fear and do the work, like the subconscious work that's coming through. So this is why this connection is happening. There's lots of shadowy subconscious stuff that's creating fear and trigger. And both of you guys are triggered. So unless you know why you're triggered, you can control the trigger. You can release the trigger and you don't hold this person hostage in any energetic way, it doesn't mean forgiving them in a way here that repeats. No, it's just learning and seeing it clearly. See the ego, see the shadow, see your own triggers. Then this person 
sees how you engage energetically because there's an energetic bond here, telepathic bond between you and this person. They sense it. And now they might not see themselves like this. It's like, oh, yeah, you know, maybe I, I was acting this way, but that's not who I truly am. You know, if 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 Pile 2 saw me differently than this, maybe there is truth because I trust Pile 2. Pile 2 has always been very honest and nice to me. You know, very loving. Pile 2 is not going to lie to me. So if Pile 2, you know, sees past my actions, my shadow, maybe I can. Maybe I can. But right now I feel very alone and I feel abandoned. You know, and, and pile two is just saying, good, you should be abandoned. You did it to yourself. Meanwhile, you know, humanity. Yes, they did do it to themselves in a way, but really they didn't. It's their subconscious triggering acting out. They don't need to be drowning in the desert, but neither do you. So what do we want to do? You know, do we want to say, well, no one helped me, so I don't help you. That attitude, or I can see this now. And so therefore, I don't want you to drown because I see your divine being. And so I'm being called. Being called to step up here, okay? Pile 2, you do what you want. This is your reading. I hope this helped you see something a little differently, but um, it's all up to you. Nothing's wrong. You know, you're wherever you're at in this journey. And that's absolutely fine. But I'm sure you don't want, um, you know, conflict and drama, you know. So whatever keeps you out of any sort of suffering. And if we cannot transcend past the ego then we just be honest about it there's a need to come into some great truth this is where i'm at embrace it love it you know keep working on it if you don't want to be anything other than who you are now with triggers and traumas then be full of triggers and traumas if you want to transcend triggers and traumas then work on that but be honest about it look at it in self everyone has triggers and traumas in shadow how's mine acting out in this connection because it's getting in the way it's getting in the way all right, that's what I have. All right, bye-bye. Hello, hello, gorgeous angels. Pile number three. You guys picked the high priest with personal empowerment, 9-9. Nine, nine. And I'm looking at tapping into your person's sort of um, perspective here in regards to um, you know, what's going on between you and this person. Now, it could come through as divine guidance objectively and peering into how they're engaged and why they're engaged the way they are okay but i'll let you know if it's sort of coming from their perspective and why they're sort of doing what they're doing because they might not even realize okay what's going on sort of uh, subconsciously or behind the scenes so this is to provide you with more information regarding this person so if you want to see past certain things and know how to engage with them a little better then maybe this will be helpful okay that's what this is all intended for because i'm not kind of looking at who this person is i will ask that you use your intuition what you'll see feel are here to determine whether this messaging is right for you and for those of you guys kind of new here i'm, I'm reading soul connections okay not your sort of everyday you know fear-based love connection so this might not make a whole lot of sense to you if it doesn't it's not your pile don't force it to fit if someone's abusive not nice and all those things go on move on with yourself okay now don't solely talking about why is this person sort of stuck on you why is this connection stuck why can't they move on or why is it that they're sort of yeah like hanging on to you now this could be your own energy because this is sometimes how it comes through so if it's your own energy then you might want to go check out another pile and see if your person is there okay so high priest personal empowerment so yeah I'm, I'm seeing definitely like this is about learning about our own ability to be balanced you know to, to set boundaries and, and this sort of a thing so let's see could it certainly be your energy yeah we have grace 24 the frequency of grace supports our smooth adaptation to an anticipation of life's currents and changes as we evolve towards a higher version of ourselves on this earthly plane bring, uh, bridging the divine with the human essence this is really what pile two was coming through as which i hope some of you guys from pile two are coming over here because this is the same energy that i was trying to communicate over there Surrender to trust. Trust yourself and your decisions. Don't be swayed by other people's strong opinions about what to do. Take action and be confident that you have chosen the right path. Mm -hmm. And we have surrender the drama. No matter how emotionally charged the situation, remain calm and don't contribute to the drama. Staying centered will help resolve the issue more quickly. Mm -hmm. And we have the chemistry between us is off the charts. And I want a new beginning with you. And we have Ice King, Boss, Entrepreneur, and Detached. 
And we have destiny, luck, chance, and meant to be. Wow, wow, wow. And we have lightning, sudden change, shocking news, surprise, epiphany, upheaval, and transformation. And we have the hen, divine feminine energy. And we have the white tail, this masculine energy. Change. Okay, and then we have fire, which is liar. Wow, this is sometimes gives me four wands, and four wands is the twin flame for me, but is talking about um, four wands talks about coming together, a union. Fire, lots of passion here. Okay, so we have ice and fire, the mask. So 61 or the number seven. And we have the fault line, and this is number 49, or number 13, which I was getting with the white tail, transformation, spiritual change. And we have the sustainer, 24. Wow, it's personal empowerment with the sustainer here. And the diviner, divine timing and evaluation. Mm-hmm. And alche alchemist, alchemist, oh my goodness, alchemist. Okay, light attributes, transformation of base motives and goals into golden wisdom. Oh my goodness, totally was feeling with this white tail and the number 13. Misuse of the power, knowledge that come through spiritual practice. And fool, light attributes, fearlessly reveling emotion, sorry, Fearlessly revealing emotion, helping people laugh at absurdity and hypocrisy. Shadow attributes, using humor to wound rather than liberate denial for your emotional truth. Exorcist, the mask, freeing yourself and others of destructive impulses. Shadow attribute, fear of facing your own demons. The great work, number 61 or the number seven pulling through again look at that you guys 60 yeah 61 61 so you might want to google 6161 angel number but what are the chances we have that coming through very interesting and here we have 53 or the number eight sun splendor okay Mm, I'm gonna tap into this energy. Just give me a minute. Okay. You guys could be mirroring each other. This could be your energy. Okay. But um, I'm going to read this as your person. This is a beautiful energy, but but it, um, it kind of bends at other people's will. And it could be that this person is just too... Um, like, like kind of passive here, you know? And they're passive in their world, and they've lived like this. And so the truest version of themselves is is um, crying to come out. Their whole world sort of needs to fall apart here. I think this person likes to keep everybody happy. And they want to sort of um, keep peace. You know, it's kind of like the Libra energy here. And what they're what, why they're hanging on to you and what's going on with this connection is I think they're being called to foster this version of the, themselves that's going to come out slowly but surely in a way here. But in order to do this, there's a lot of things in their world that need to fall away and they need to part with. And it's painful. It's very painful. But it's either this or this person just keeps uh, the status quo, doing everything for everyone else or just doing what everyone else wants them to be, kind of, you know. And so this shocking news, I feel, is this tower energy. This white tail is huge, massive shift. This is like the foundation is cracking. Tower energy, like they can't maintain in the old energy that they were. You know, so this connection, it, it's passion, it's fire. It's, it's calling for their authentic self to come out 
and live in that um, authenticity and and remove all of the, the false self here that tells them they can't be themselves. And so there's a part of them that they've been suppressing and or just like pretending is not them in some way or not honoring, you know, in their world, maybe putting themselves last or just not listening to it, trying to fit in or play peace or... So a part of this person is is very much um, easily sort of um, doing what other people sort of want them to be and do. So it could be that, you know, if it's, it's the parents or their family have a, a story for them of who they need to be or their, their beliefs of how they grew up and their tradition, and that's what they're doing here. Now, this doesn't mean that you see this person as sort of um, a peacemaker to you. You know, that they're a pushover and all that. No, it's whatever has this person's attention in some way to believe that they are the thing that they think that they are. And it's not true. This is the false self that they need to identify in themselves. I am not, you know, let's say the, the whatever the story is. The thing they built their foundation on, their hierophant. You know, they build their hierophant in their world. You know, this is how I live my life. This is what I value. This is what I'm committed to, what I trust to be the right thing. And so now when this connection is a mirror to them and it goes against all of this stuff, you know, all of this other stuff, so something needs to give. So either I could lean into this connection and be true, or I could keep pretending and wear this mask and keep suffering in some way here. But what's happened here and why this is happening is there's a, a destined, faded comings together with you and this person in order for this person to transmute this type of a false energy, recognize what isn't them, and be born again as their true self, liberated, personal empowerment, free. And so the more they resist, you know, the more the universe is putting you sort of as this attractive energy between you and this person. So this person certainly wants to be with you. I think in this person's mind, what I'm picking up here is that, you know, uh, I'd have to start anew if I were to get with pile number three. And in order to do this, it would require a series of things that I'm quite not yet prepared to do or have not yet done, I should say. Whether they're prepared to or not, I don't know. And so they may push you out. Okay, I'm getting with the hand. It might seem cold or like they're not interested. You know, meanwhile, there's a burning passion. There's a lot of chemistry here. But the divine timing is coming through here saying there's a reason why this person is being pulled to you, why there's so much passion here. This person has to do a major evaluation about what's right in their life and they're going to have to be the ones to see the false self, to exercise the false self out of them, to harbor their true self, feed their true self in order for them to find happiness in their own world instead of just maintaining the status quo, being the thing that everyone told them that they had to be. You know, a false self. Appeasing everyone else, being like a jester. You know, the jester clown. I make everyone else happy by doing and acting and, and being in the show rather than just leading my own life, you know, laying eggs for everyone else or whatever, the people that's, that's, I feel I need to lay eggs for rather than me just, you know, being empowered, saying I'm this, this sort of belief in this relationship makes me happy and that's it. But it would require shedding of this tower, this hierophant, this constructed thing that we believe we are, and we'd rather just upkeep the peace. So this person could be in another relationship, like a marriage, and this person could just be fulfilling, you know, parental role, could be, I don't know, have a, have a religious belief, there could be something between you and this person that um, goes against their um, religion, their tradition, their upbringing. And so instead of engaging with you, it's like, I'm just going to be this ice king and, and um, 
I don't know. I don't want to put up with what people are going to think of me with the surrender, the drama. But everything is drama for this person because so they'd rather just not engage. It's like if, if I was caught with pile three, it's like the worst thing ever in some way, you know. Not that they think you're the worst thing ever, but it, it'd be the worst thing ever to this upkeep of the tower. So I got to be the opposite here and be cold, you know, even though I'm feeling the complete opposite here. So this person feels fire, passion, chemistry, burning desire. So I'm going to be cold and, and pretend to just completely reject, you know, but all I'm doing is fooling myself and what I resist persists and the truth reveals itself and something's cracking here in the truth. The truth is this tower is unsustainable. We can't build our homes on sand. So this person is learning and they're learning about this. So let's see. Clear and concise message for the greatest and highest good of pile number three. From their perspective, are they hanging on? I feel like this person can't just let you go because they're being called by their destiny to make these changes in their world. For them to see that their authentic self is pulling them closer to the divine, that the spiritual change is required, that the false self needs to fall away. And so you could certainly have your own you know, reasons for being in this connection. You could be mirroring this person. You could have your own tower you're needing to part with here. Right, how are you, you know, sort of upkeeping your own tower? Because I have a feeling this group is, is probably mirrored in some way. You know, and maybe we're saying, well, once this person sort of lets their tower fall, then I'll let my tower fall. Well, then neither of you guys are going to kind of get there. Someone needs to sort of lead this. Okay, so Knight of Pentacles, I don't read bottom of the deck reverse. Under that, we have Six Swords. We have to deal now. I feel the universe is putting in front of this person. They have to deal with this. They can't hide away, and it's going to remain in front of them. They can't move on. They can't move forward from this. It's, it's a mental prison here that they need to trust the universe and deal with it, however slow. And I feel you're probably mirroring doing the exact same thing. So we're going to be stuck there until we do something. Knight of Cups, suppressing how we feel, not coming forward, showing how we really feel, expressing ourselves. So we suppress, suppress, deny, don't act on it. And two swords, don't act on it. You know, we don't take action. We don't take action, nor are we communicating. Eight Pentacles, maybe we're focused on work. Maybe we give more energy towards the thing here that we're upkeeping. And Queen of Wands. So you could, like I said, be the other woman, but this is the chemistry between us is off the charts. How does your person see you as absolutely attractive? They're pulled by your passion. They're really pulled to you sexually here, okay? Lots of passion, lots of beauty, but lots of you guys could be the other woman, like interfering in their hierophant. Their, their guilty pleasure that they're not supposed to be sort of looking at or dealing with or expressing or taking action on. Five of Cups in reverse. So it's not even wanting to feel emotions here you know they don't want to feel emotions but why aren't they letting you go it's like because i don't want to lose pile number three i'd rather pretend like they don't exist or that i will get over this feeling somehow but i haven't really mourned or dealt with my feelings so i'm suppressing and so they'll continue to remain there until i look at it you know but but this is i have to deal with the five cups in my world because there's something in their world that's tower that needs to fall for them to mourn and get over. But they don't want to exp experience this. Or at least they, they haven't yet. And they're not being they're not taking action on this. You know, the moon, too much fear. They have to come out of how they're seeing their situation. And the king of swords in reverse. It's like I don't want to take action. I don't want to see a truth. I don't want to you know, I don't want to do any of these things. Some of you guys might work with this person. Okay, and I feel like you guys have been trying to work on this connection, but at the same time, this person is completely removed. Ice King, that's what this is, you know, could be cold, could be showing like they don't even care. Completely detached, detached from emotions. They don't allow themselves to feel and express, but, it, but this is also in their tower world. They don't want to go through that because this person does fear their emotions because that goes against their hierophant. Three wands. The universe is calling this person to move on, expand, grow. You know, this is grow within their world. They're stuck right now. And they'll forever sort of be stuck here as long as they're living someone else's sort of idea of who they're supposed to be. And it could be them telling themselves that they have to be this sort of person because that's what they believed. That's what they were told that they had to do. 
you know, be stand up, stay in your marriage. If they're completely unhappy, well, then they believe this, you know, because then I'm all these things, you know, or if this is the same sex, it's like, well, you'll be shunned by God or whatever, whatever the belief is here, you know, keeps them maintaining the status quo, doing the same thing. I feel like some of them might be really focused on work right now. And the more they sort of feel pulled, the more they focus on work. But but why are they so pulled to you is is because what you resist persists. The more they shove it down, the more they don't express a card fell, the more they're pulled to you. This fell, I'm going to shuffle it back with the Queen of Swords in reverse. So I think you're definitely their um, counterpart here as they see you. Okay, there are King of Swords reverse, your Queen of Swords reverse. It's like you guys intellectually understand each other. Intellectually, you guys definitely understand each other. But there's this unspoken sort of understanding here and i feel like you're super unclear right now as to what the heck like you know with the queen of swords in reverse because this person hasn't provided you confirmation you just you feel it you understand it your your intuition knows something here you know so you might be like i said mirroring you're also being called to show grace and to deal with towers in your own world, to the false self in your own world. But let's see. Spirit, can we get a little bit more here for Pile 3? What is Pile 3 needing to know in regards to their person's perspective and what's going on here? Death. Yeah, need for massive transformation. Scorpio energy. Okay, this is the old world that no longer serves us, has to fall away for us to make space for the new beliefs, spiritual sort of um, ideas that we might be hanging on to that it could have been fed to us instead of learning it on our own or experiencing it on our own. And with the Queen of Swords in reverse, it's like, I'm going to take what I'm being told rather than the experience itself and run with that is kind of what this person is doing. You know, I was told that this is bad or that this would happen and this and this. So I'm just going to take this and run with it and build my life and my tower on this. Meanwhile, we need the Queen of Swords in the upright, which is through my own experience, I have determined a greater truth. That yes, I believe this and I don't believe that. Now we've seen the mask. But right now this person's wearing a mask and they haven't seen through the mask. And I have a feeling it has to do with family. You know, defending some sort of f f familial thing here. Two pentacles in reverse. Yeah, it's like they're not even... Seeing you as a choice. It's not even a, a choice about choosing you. It's like they shut it down completely. Because it, it, it just the thought of it is already going against their hierophant. Yeah, they need to sit with judgment. This is the great awakening. Getting very honest. You know, no lies, no suppression, no hidden things. Not what's on the surface. But sit with yourself and get, get honest about your truth. How do you feel? You know, if you, if you were to drop all stories... All identities, everything that was fed to you and come with the truth. How do you feel? And their 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 answer would be, I feel pulled to pile three. I want to build something with pile three. But my upbringing and my beliefs don't allow me to. What do you mean don't allow? That needs to sh shift. This is, this is an egoic construct. You know, social construct, programming, beliefs that don't exist. They don't exist in the um, divine realm. Only our authentic self exists. So we're going against it. So we're going to live miserable. Yeah, the tower. This is exactly what I said. I was getting heavy tower energy pulling through all these and, and death. You know, so we keep adding to the tower, keeping up the illusion and supporting the structure identity we built. On lies because it goes against how we really truly feel and it starts to wobble and eventually it will fall and it's already on a fault line here you know so this person has to do the work hang man yeah get enlightened work with the divine see things completely different this is questioning the hierophant is what this hangman is I'm now questioning the hierophant I'm seeing things completely from devil's advocate perspective like seeing, sitting with it, understanding it, getting enlightened so that I can make better decisions, so I can see the tower for what it is, so I can identify myself from an authentic place, not from the eyes of 
someone else. And then I know what I need to release. Then I know how to shift and transform. But right now I'm just sort of, you know, doing the status quo. Upkeeping the Hierophant that I was told that I need to do. And, and maybe that I, I've hang, hung on to a belief that I, I have to be this way. So it makes me feel this, that, and the other. No, well, destiny is telling you otherwise. This connection is meant to be. There's a reason why this person is needing to do this divine timing. The time is now for them to take action. You know, exercise the demon within them. Grow and manifest this beautiful thing that they can have. That they know is there. So I just keep staring at this thing. You know, look at this look. Just keep staring at this thing, but I'm like... You know, pretending it, it doesn't really exist. And the more I stare intently, the more I want it. Okay. Well, I'm going to trust. Trust in the divine. You know. So, this is what I see in pile number three. I hope this helped you. I love you very much. I'll see you at the next one. Bye-bye.